So I've been asked to do a film specifically about phobias because, you know, if one person can have a phobia, then pretty much anyone can have a phobia. And literally, a phobia can completely stop people in the tracks. It can make you adapt your life entirely. It can get in the way of relationships. I mean, it can even stop you from leaving your home. The fact is you can have a phobia to literally anything. And the reason why you can have a phobia to anything is because of the ways that people get phobias. Let's not lose sight of, firstly, no one is born with a phobia. I'll say that again. No one on the planet is born with a phobia. We are born with two fears, which is falling and loud noises. That aside, no one is born with a phobia. So, how can we develop a phobia? There are three ways. The first way, is actually having a phobic experience with something. So let's say, we'll talk spiders for example, let's say a spider fell on your head and it frightened you. In that moment of fear, you look at the spider, you blame the spider, you've now got arachnophobia. So basically a trauma. So the first one, like Nick said, is if you yourself have experienced some sort of trauma. The second one is copy behavior because, you know, why do you have the accent that you do? That's because you've copied your parents and you've copied your family. So if, if your parent, a parent or a sibling or somebody that you're very close to has a phobia, uh, then you can actually copy that behaviour and then follow suit. It's so common when we send our questionnaires out for people that come and see us privately, there's a question on there, um, did your family, uh, parents or si siblings have any phobias? And I would say probably 40% of people that come and see us, they've got their phobia from someone in their family. The third way that you can get a phobia is actually by being told that you've got one. And that might sound bizarre, however, we've had so many people where, for example, they've been crying as a child, and one of the parents has said to another parent, oh, our son or our daughter is frightened of that. So they grow up being told that they're frightened of something and that creates a phobia. Now, just to go back to the trauma, by the way, I know that Nick said that something might happen to you, but when we say trauma, that can be any kind of a trauma. So that's when you feel traumatized because something's happened to you. That can be because you feel traumatized by a dream or a nightmare. That can be because you're traumatized by seeing something on television or you could be traumatized by actually watching something happen to somebody else. So, you know, three ways of have, getting a phobia, um, but if you've had a trauma, like I said, there's, there's four variations predominantly that, that that might happen. So, there's two types of, of phobias. There's a simple phobia and a complex. Simple phobias tend to be um, pretty straightforward. You've had a bad experience, you create you create. But it's essentially a phobia. phobia of an object more than Usually, anything. Usually, yeah. Your more complex phobias tend to be things like emetophobia, which is a phobia of vomit. Um, the reason that it's complex um, is because to accommodate that fear, you might start to get OCD behaviors because you don't want to be sick. Or, for example, claustrophobia can become complex because that might start off with enclosed spaces, but then that can carry on into toilet cubicles. All forms of travel. All forms of travel. It, mean, it can mean that you have to have the windows open in your home, can't lock doors. So that can kind of extend into other things. Um, however, whether it's a simple phobia or a complex phobia, you can actually get over any phobia because you're not born with it. Yeah, that's and that's absolutely correct. All phobias can be cured and there's different ways to get you over them, but essentially, phobias can be cured. So if you have a phobia, don't lose sight of that. Even if you've been struggling with it for years, it doesn't matter how long you've had it because essentially, what we always work on the basis of, you could have had it 10, 15, 20, 30, the longest we've ever got someone over phobia, they had a phobia for 83 years. So the length of time you've had it doesn't make any difference. We always work on how long did it take you to get it. Yeah. And that's the thing. Uh, and for some people, it's seconds. And what's really interesting is that pretty much, I'd say most people that approach us and ask for our help with a phobia, they, um, two common lines are, it's deep rooted. Well, there's no such thing. No such thing. Uh, it might be that you've practiced it a lot, but there's no such thing as deep rooted. Um, it is what it is. You know, it's an inaccurate, uh, inaccurate learning about an object or a thing or an environment. Um, so, it, but it's not deep rooted. And and the other thing that we hear is my phobia is worse than anybody else's that you've probably ever come across. Well, pretty much everybody says that because when you're consumed by a phobia, then it feels horrendous. Um, however, we've said it. You know, you can get over it. So the first thing to understand. 
is that a phobia, actually, it's not a disease. It, it is literally a protection that you've created. So you've had some sort of trauma, observed some sort, sort of trauma, copied some sort of trauma, and uh, you've instigated your fight or flight response, basically. So you've said, need to avoid that in the future, and your body's just reacting by giving you a shot of adrenaline. What that adrenaline is supposed to do is to help you to fight or to run away. Uh, and to do that, it makes you feel hotter, it makes you take more breaths in so that you get more oxygen, so you can oxygenate your blood so that your muscles are ready for action, uh, it makes your pupils dilate, it makes you feel hot, makes your heart beat, I may have already said that, but it, there's all these feelings. But do you know what, Eva? Essentially, if you have a phobic response, it makes you feel bad. Yeah, and it's anxiety. It's, it's your fight or flight response in a nutshell. That is so, it. So, how can you get over phobia? That's the thing, it doesn't matter what phobia you've got, the first thing to consider is not all the symptoms, it doesn't matter how long you've had it, how many times you've had these phobic responses, what you need to look for is when did it start? Because essentially, you, we know you weren't born with it, so one day you didn't have the phobia, the next day you did. So what was the day that changed your life? What was the day that you created that phobia? Now that, that might be because you saw a parent having a phobic response and you're now copying, but it's when did it start? So is it even yours is the first question, um, If it's particularly if you've copied you know it. No, we should give some examples really. I mean, essentially, we worked with a lady who had a fear of spiders and that came about because she was staying at her grandma's she got woken up, she was in bed at night, she got woken up with a scream. She was only like four years of age. She came downstairs, she wondered why her grandma was screaming and she looked and her grandma had seen a spider and she was screaming at the spider. So in that moment of trauma, she looks at the spider. She didn't blame her grandma, she blamed the spider. So to literally, all you have to do to get over a phobia is to change your perspective. So you're no so longer- So using that as an example. Yeah, so with that one, for example, all we asked this particular lady was, okay, so you've feared spiders ever since that moment, but who actually frightened you? And after some thought, she said, oh my goodness, it was my grandma, the spider did nothing. Um, and, and literally changing your perspective is about gaining lots of evidence as to why what you're believing actually isn't true because what you're doing currently is you're looking to collect evidence as to why you should, should still be frightened exactly well as what we're saying is okay let's now start to look for the opposite so but actually trying to find evidence as to why you should be frightened what you're actually doing consistently is trying to make an abnormal situation normal yeah uh, because essentially it is abnormal because you shouldn't have a phobia to anything and the more times you do that and the more time you try and justify that behavior and the more phobic responses that you have it's like exercising a muscle and that will get bigger and bigger and bigger which is why if you've got a phobia you've probably noticed that it does sort of feel like it gets worse and you've added more triggers to it however it doesn't matter how many triggers you've added it's all sat on that originating experience that started this off. So that's and, what you need to change. And it's actually how you interpreted that situation. Correct. So the example we just gave, the little girl interpreted that the spider was dangerous, which is why her grandma was screaming. Another example, which is very common with, with dog phobias, is being a, a small child and a dog running, jumping up at you and knocking you over. And the thing is, the interpretation of that is the dogs attacked me when actually it was happy to see you. So a really good way to do this is to consider yourself like a lawyer or a barrister and that you've got to stand in court and instead of condemning the thing that you're phobic to, your job is to actually uh, to, to stand up for that, that, that height, that object or that situation and you've got to fight its corner as to why it's actually okay. Um, it might sound a little bit fun but literally that is what you have to do because currently your perspective is based upon protecting yourself from that thing because it's dangerous. So our question is, well, why isn't it dangerous? And I'm gonna give you some examples. We're gonna give you some little examples here of what we mean by that. So for if you've learnt your, your um, fear from somebody else, then you've gotta realize that it's neither yours, so it doesn't belong to you, and it wasn't the thing or the object that actually caused you fear it was the person that was having the phobic response. Um, another example is if, if you're fearful of heights, for example, then you've got to ask yourself, what has a height ever done to you? It just exists. Now, to jump off a height would be dangerous, but why would you ever want to do that? Um, you, know, you can actually fall on the ground from a, a, a low level and hurt yourself. So what you've got to appreciate is that height isn't coming to get you, and whilst you're fearful of a height, then you're a victim of it. But in actual fact, height has never done anything to you. 
dog, like Nick said, if one dog's ever done anything to you, then don't blame the whole race. You know, you if you've had a friend. Yeah, I mean the thing mean. is, don't misinterpret the, the the dog situation. If a dog jumps at you, it didn't attack you. It just wanted to say hello because sometimes that's what dogs do. But even the worst case scenario, a dog attacked you and actually bit you, and you suffered from it, then it wasn't all dogs, it was just that dog, so, and just in yeah. the same way with people. Yeah, so you just avoid that one dog and not the entire species. If, for example, you've got a phobia of vomit, I mean, we do have a separate film on on our YouTube for channel for emetophobia, also driving phobia, also agoraphobia. There's quite a few on there, so do take a look around. However, if you've got a phobia of vomit, what you've got to ask yourself is what's vomit ever done to you? Because in actual fact, Vomit is our first, body's first line of defense. Vomit actually helps to save lives because it gets rid of toxins. Um, so it's you, what you should do is appreciate that it's a, a, a normal bodily function that's there to protect you. Again, like I said, we've got a 20 minute film just about that. So what we're actually saying to you is, look, look at what you're phobic to and see it for what it is and not how it felt when you first started it. And you've got to collect lots and lots of evidence. Like I said, have a look on our YouTube channel because we've got lots of examples of different specific phobias on there. However, what we want you to understand is you weren't born with it, that you don't have to live with it. It is just a protection. So instead of fearing that response, say thank you to your body for trying to protect you and then look for loads of evidence as to why the thing that you're phobic to actually isn't a danger to you. And in doing so, once you've got enough evidence and you completely believe it, you will sever that link between whatever it is you're fearful to, to your fight or flight response. And then you can start to learn how to live with that item without that feeling of fear. Do take a look around our YouTube channel because we've got lots of examples of how we actually address specific phobias. However, if you want to watch us actually doing it live, if you want to see our formula, if you want to watch us cure phobias, or you want to actually speak to us in person and come along to one of our workshops, then just drop an email to events at speakman.tv and they will send you a full list of everywhere that we're going to be with our workshops, which are called Concrete Anxiety and Upgrade Your Life. Thanks so much for listening to us. We really hope that our films helped. Thank you.